Today I'm going to talk about the basic structure of Japanese meals. We have rice or other variety of carbs and soups and main course, the proteins and vegetable side dishes. This is a chart from the Japanese Ministry of Agriculture, Forest and Fisheries. As you can see from top to bottom, we are encouraged to have many carbs and vegetables, main course and dairy and fruit. And here is from USDA. I believe the Obama administration started to give the information to have a healthy meal at school. When you look at these two charts, we see how important the balance is. As you can see, the Japanese chart is more specific. We eat eggs, chicken, beef, pork, fish, and tofu for the main course. And we have a variety of vegetables including seaweed and fruit. And we have a variety of carbs like white rice, bread, udon noodles, and soba noodles. And we have mochi and okonomiyaki, that is a flour-based meal. To fill the calcium, we have milk, yogurt, and cheese. And we have sweet Japanese-style snacks. I call the sweet snack is nutrition for your mind. We make meals on the basic idea of Ichiju Sansai, that means in addition to rice and miso soup, three different side dishes will make the perfect balanced meal. But this is for dinner because we cannot make three different kinds of side dishes for every meal, so I keep it for the dinner. We have white rice or brown rice or multi-grain rice for rice. It's all up to you which rice to have. I myself eat brown rice almost every day. You can take the minerals and fibers from the brown rice so you can get the additional nutrients from the brown rice. But the refined white rice goes well with any food so you can't miss it. Multi-grain rice adds a nutty flavor and you can get more minerals and proteins from it. As I said, the basic idea of the Japanese meal is Ichiju Sansai, but breakfast usually is more simple. This is our typical Japanese breakfast menu. Rice and miso soup and tamagoyaki and spinach and pickles. And this is a typical western style breakfast, egg and vegetables and a toasted shokupan served with butter and jam. This is very popular in Japan. And sometimes I have very simple breakfast like this whole wheat bread with cheese on top and some fruit. I myself on an intermediate fasting, so I take butter coffee for breakfast for the last 3 to 4 years. It's all up to you which type of the breakfast you are taking. You should consider blood sugar levels which I talk to you later. You should take food that keeps you full longer. For lunch, we eat bento like this. This is my son's high school bento. Now he is a college student, so I don't make bento lunchbox anymore, but this is a very common lunch in Japan. My son is a baseball player, so I add a lot of proteins and lots of rice. Japanese style hamburg steak and karaage is very popular for the bento. Sometimes he brought a sandwich to eat after morning training. This is a store-bought bento. It has too much rice for the middle age or older people, so just eat half of the rice and keep it for the next meal or freeze it for another meal. People like me work from home or people at home make a simple lunch for themselves. This is my typical lunch, salad and lean proteins and avocado and toast and latte. Sometimes I have udon noodles topped with tempura or rice balls like this, or sometimes I have pasta dishes. We eat the satsuma mikan or persimmon for snacks when it's season. Sometimes we eat mochi and the milk pudding served with fruit sauce like this. I think the dessert is very important for your mind. As long as that food makes you happy, you can take it, but not too much. The portion is the key. Let me talk about the portion later. And the dinner is supposed to be a biggest meal of the day. We relax and have a good food and get ready for the next day. This is the typical meal for my son. 
We have protein and vegetables and carbs like this. This one is the powerful meal for me to get the energy. Natto and kimchi and also soft cooked egg. I love this rice bowl so much so I eat this at least three times a week. That means each two days. These are the typical meals we eat every day. Now let's talk about the portions. How do you know the best portion for yourself? Let's count your food. One unit is a one fifth, that is 100 gram. If your hand is very large, it's not going to be like that, but overall, I think the 100 gram is like this size. You need two carbs and protein and four to five units of the vegetables and one unit of the dairy product and 0.5 unit of dessert. I found this portion is the best for me, but I am a middle-aged woman, so this is appropriate, but man is different. And also you should consider your daily activities. Find your own balance for yourselves. The point is 80% full is the best portion for you. Do not take too much food. If you are keeping your ideal weight, it's the best portion for you. I eat what I want to eat. Eat a lot of food that contains different kinds of nutrients and in appropriate portions. So I feel good and I am in the perfect shape and health. In the next video, I will show you how to cook the food to take various kinds of nutrients. Managing your blood sugar level is the key. Let's talk about it in the next video.